Hello everyone, it's Lore Plays. When playing RimWorld, I have so many mods that I love to use, almost too many. So I decided to sit down and make a list of my favorite mods, separated into various categories. I hope my lists help newcomers to RimWorld, but also maybe some veterans. There might be one or two you haven't seen before. Today I'm bringing you a list of my top 20 favorite quality of life mods for RimWorld. 20 is a pretty big number for this type of video, but I just couldn't narrow it down. If there is a mod you love, that is not mentioned on this list, definitely comment down below. It might be on one of my other lists, so be sure to check those out. A lot of quality of life mods you will instead see on a separate list called necessary mods. Before I begin, please note that this is only my opinion, and it's all based off of mods that I have personally used at some point. I do not know any of the mod authors. There's nothing competitive about this list. <laughs> Let's all just have fun and enjoy the game. Starting out the list at number 20, Show Mod Designators. This mod adds a little text indicator in the item's description that tells you what mod it's from. While this might not seem like it'd be very helpful at first glance, I have found myself relying on it tremendously whenever I'm running a huge list of mods, which I do all the time. If I don't understand what an item does, I can quickly tell at a glance what exactly to Google. Or if I have some mods that overlap ideas or themes, it can be helpful to know which one belongs to what. At 19 is Heat Map. A lot of us, I imagine, are visually oriented creatures. <laughs> heat map allows you to toggle a colorful overlay onto your colony that displays the temperature for each of the rooms. Red for very hot, of course, blue for very cold, yellow for close, and green for just right. While you can locate the temperature of the room by hovering over the floor and seeing it on the right, heat map allows you to check all of the rooms at a quick glance. This is very helpful when you have a big cluster of bedrooms, for example, and maybe you forgot to put a vent into just one of them, and you never realized one room out of dozens is boiling hot. At 18, we have Prepare Landing. Prepare Landing lets you quickly navigate to a tile on your world map that you would like to colonize at the beginning of your game. Instead of blindly looking for a spot to land, you can specify exactly what you want. What type of stone you want on the map, for example, the super strong granite or the beautiful marble. What biome you want, or a temperature range, or if you want a mountainous base but no dangerous insect caves. What I like to do is find a tile that is boreal forest, which is normally very cold, but south enough that the temperature range allows for more time to grow plants. Not every seed has this type of tile, and Prepare Landing lets me quickly find it without aimlessly clicking around. Number 17 on my list is Map Reroll. So you just prepared your landing to the highest degree of perfection, but the map you crash landed on kinda sucks. Map Reroll gives you the ability to quickly reroll the entire map. Not only does it show a preview of rocky terrain, but it also shows where the rich soil would be, so you can get a huge starting advantage. The mod is a little OP in that regard, which it does try to balance by removing resources from the map whenever you do reroll, but you can disable that in the settings I do. At number 16 is Best Mix. I never used this mod before 1.1, maybe it wasn't around, I'm not sure, but it's great. Best Mix allows you to specify what type of ingredients your pawns will prioritize using for your crafting bills. By default, colonists will pick up whatever is nearest, so the nearest cloth or the nearest vegetable. Instead, you can set the best mix to use whatever ingredient is expiring sooner or whatever cloth provides the most warmth. While you can specify these settings under the bill settings, best mix is more of a priority system and it is very quick to set up. Next at 15 is Run and Gun. Run and Gun does as its name implies, allows your colonists to move around while shooting at their target. Normally your colonists would need to run and then stop moving before shooting. This puts them at a disadvantage if they are running from an animal or a melee raider and perhaps they aren't wearing the best of gear to take them head on. Some people think that this mod is OP, but it does provide balance by slowing you down slightly and reducing your accuracy while you are running. Still, this makes combat for me. Number 14 is Compact Heat Ifs. This mod is another quality of life adjustment for quick, at-a-glance visual references. 
Basically, it's much easier to check out your pond's health with this mod. It reorganizes ailments, injuries, and bionics so they fit neatly under each body part it affects, and it gives you nice little icons to show various severities of bleeding. Each body part shows its own health bar, but my favorite part is the bar that shows illness and infection. Normally you would need to look at the immunity versus sickness percentage and compare the numbers yourself. This mod lets you quickly see how your pawn is doing by showing green progress if they are getting better, or red progress if they are doing worse. Next at 13 is Pharmacist. By default, doctors will try to tend to sick or injured pawns using the best quality medicine they have, regardless of the situation. Pharmacist lets you break down the type of medicine they receive based on what their injury actually is. So if it's just a bruise or something, they'll use low quality herbal medicine, for example, instead of your very expensive glitter world medicine. Or if it's a prisoner you don't necessarily care about, you can set them to be allowed doctor care, but no medicine in some cases, regular medicine in other cases. This mod is simple and works right out of the box. And number 12, we have Outfitted. If you are setting your colonists' outfits to anything, you are really missing out on the potential awesome efficiencies some of your clothing might provide. Outfitted allows you to customize parameters for each worker role that your colonists will prioritize equipping. For example, you can set your high social pawns to the warden outfit so they prioritize grabbing clothes that provide an increase to social. Give your growers plant speed and your builders construction speed. Outfitted comes with outfits already pre-made for you, which I use all the time, but you can add and customize your own. Next at 11 is Show Drafty's Weapon. There isn't really much to say about this mod except that I miss it when I don't have it. This mod shows each colonist's currently equipped weapon underneath their portrait when they are drafted, or even all the time, which you can turn on in the settings. This gives you a quick glance at what each person has equipped, who still needs a weapon, who needs an upgrade, who has long range, or who only has a melee weapon. Overall, it saves a lot of time. Number 10 on my list is Everybody Gets One. So you know how you can set your crafting bills to do forever, do a certain amount of times, or do until you have a certain amount in your inventory? Everybody Gets One lets you set a bill to the number of colonists that changes automatically whenever that number increases or decreases. For example, if you wanted everyone to have a duster, you can set it to one per colonist. Make sure count equipped is checked, and then forget about it. When you get a new person, you won't need to go in and change anything. I use Everybody Gets One for food. By setting four per colonist, each pawn has enough food to last about two days. Also check out TD Enhancements Pack by the same author. It's not on my list because I haven't used it before, I just found it while working on this video, but it looks great. Ultimate quality of life changes in there. At number 9, we have more planning. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll have seen that I use more planning constantly. This mod is the vanilla planning tool on steroids. <laughs> you can use different colors for your plans, even set custom ones if you don't like what's there. But the best part of the mod is being able to copy, cut, and paste plans. Without this mod, you would have to delete your entire plan and redo it if you wanted to make just a simple change, like move it over a few tiles. But this mod lets you keep your plan and move it through cut, and copy it around if it's a plan you'll be repeating. You can also turn down the opacity of your plans or turn them off completely. Number eight is What's Missing. This is a newer mod, at least at the time of recording this, and it is absolutely the best. How many times have you struggled to figure out why your colonists will not craft a bill? I for one go crazy when they refuse to make kibble and I never know why. This mod puts a neat little list together for you with items you are missing. It even takes bulk recipes into consideration by showing what ingredients you have just a few short for and in what amount. Next at number 7 is Better Workbench Management. This mod used to do so much by itself before RimWorld decided to integrate a lot of its features into vanilla, but it's still so extremely helpful even today. I don't have nearly enough time to talk about everything it does, but some highlights are the addition of the count equipped option that is crucial when using everybody gets one. It gives you a nice little toggle to either drop on the floor or take to the best stockpile, which you never knew you needed. 
But my favorite is the ability to link bills between production tables. If you have a crafting spot, for example, you'll never need to diligently micromanage each bill on each spot. Instead, you can just edit one and it will apply the changes across everything that's linked. Number six on my list is defensive positions. If you have certain places you put your colonists during a raid, this mod allows you to quickly draft them up and send them to that position all in one button. All you have to do is place them once, save the setting, and you're good to go. The only hard part is remembering to set it up to begin with. You can also use the mod's advanced mode to set up to four different settings or group your colonists into squads. This is especially helpful when you have a dedicated hunting party you'd like to draft up without having to manually select each one. Next up at number five is simple sidearms. I wasn't sure if I wanted to categorize this as a quality of life mod or a necessary mod, but here it is in the top five anyway. Simple sidearms lets your colonists equip more than one weapon that they will switch between depending on the situation. You can give all of your colonists ranged weapons, well, except brawlers, and then a melee weapon to hold on to once their target gets in range, instead of your colonists hitting them with their gun. You can also give your colonists tools that give bonuses to their job, such as construction speed, that they will switch to accordingly. There's a lot you can do with this mod, so I do recommend checking out its settings and adjusting them according to your playstyle. Four, we have Moody. This is another mod that I only recently started using and I really wish I had sooner. Moody adds a little box in the corner of the screen that contains so much information about any colonist on the map. It shows their mood, as the name implies, but also hunger, comfort, and so much more at a quick glance. You can check out what everyone is doing, and you can compare your colonists' skills. My favorite part is that you can view this box while setting up a caravan, so you can pick and choose who is going based on their fighting skills and what weapons they have equipped. I recommend exploring this mod thoroughly to see everything it can do for you. Number three is Acton, which is not pronounced that way. <laughs> I usually just call it Action, so don't listen to me. Anyway, this mod does quite a few things, but I mainly use it for two. One is that it automatically lines up your colonists evenly after you've drafted them up and dragged them along where you'd like them to go, which is very convenient. It also features a true uninterrupted job force, along with queuing up all similar nearby jobs. So I can force someone to mine everything all at once instead of having to manually tell them to mine each and every tile. Number two on my list is better pawn control. This mod saves so much time after just a little initial setup. What it lets you do is have multiple policies set up for your colonists that you can quickly switch between on the fly. You can do this for restricted areas, clothing, drugs, food, and so much more. A lot of people use it to restrict their animals whenever there's a raid, or you can use it to set everyone to armored clothing or warm clothing at winter. You can also use it to change everyone's jobs to a temporary setting. For example, everyone needs to stop what they're doing and cut plants or haul or whatever. <laughs> Once you start using it, you'll never want to play without it. And finally, number one on my list is Blueprints. Yes, such a simple mod at number one. But I looked at my list and I thought, which mod saves me the most time when I'm playing? Definitely Blueprints. This mod allows you to quickly copy anything, save it to a print, and use it somewhere else whenever you want. It's so helpful when you have the perfect bedroom, for example, that you set up and you don't want to keep setting it up over and over and over again. A recent update also made it so that you don't even need to save it as a print. You can just copy and paste. You can also export blueprints that you commonly use between saves, too. Not much else to it. And there you have it, my top 20 favorite quality of life mods. Remember to comment down below other quality of life mods that you like to use, and consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Thanks!